This. 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 This is the Racer H2O Podcast. It's time to drop that flag! Go! And now here's your host. Three wide battle for the lead. Shoulder to shoulder going into turn one. Rips that boot around. Jared Roseberg. Yeah, what's up, troops? How you doing out there? It's your old pal, Jared. Welcome to the Racer H2O podcast, and man, we've got a big one. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, it's a big one. Shout out to all of my fellow Sanford and Sud friends out there, Fred Sanford. Got a big one this week, fans. The person that I call the hardest working person, I'd say almost in all of motorsports, but certainly in watercraft racing, managing director, owner, Graham Poobah, whatever you want to call him, from Powerboat Nationals. Dan Bunting is our guest on the Racer H2O podcast this week. Going to be talking mainly about the Branson Grand Prix Series. Race number one coming up now a month from today. As I redo my math, it's a month from today. May 15th and 16th, Lake Tanny Como, Branson Landing in beautiful Branson, Missouri. Not only will Powerboat Nationals be racing there, the Pro Tunnel 2 class will be on the water. Pro Sport, the new Pro Ski, Junior Stars. It's going to be a huge weekend of racing and making it even huger. More huge? Huger? What is it? Racer H2O national television coverage, 130 million households on eight television networks, a gazillion more on our YouTube channel, we'll be watching. So a huge event, but before we get into Dan Bunting's interview fans, let me remind you, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Do it now, however you're listening to us, whether it's on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, we've got about eight or nine different places we're being distributed to for the audio end of our podcast. And of course, Check us out on YouTube, and when you're there, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Links to everything can be found at racerh2o.com. And hey, while you're there, why not? To, hey, look, we're getting ready to go out on the road. The season is almost upon us. You got to look good. Racer H2O swag. We've got hats there. We've got shirts coming. We've got koozies. Hey, I guarantee you wear a Racer H2O hat. You will immediately become. more attractive. I guarantee it. It's scientifically proven. Scientifically proven. Coming up, my interview with Dan Bunning. Don't move. That's in about 15 seconds. You are listening to the Racer H2O podcast. RacerH2O.com is the place to go to find easy-to-use links to our social media. Watch, read, listen to, and enjoy our content on demand for free on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and RacerH2O.com. All right, troops, welcome back to the podcast. And before we get rolling on this, i got to give you full disclosure. RMG Sports and Powerboat Nationals have been working together for over five years, putting different television packages together for Powerboat Nationals tunnel boat races in their host cities. We've had a great working relationship so far with just RMG Sports. And now that we've expanded into Racer H2O and the new brand and the new show and logo and all that stuff, we're continuing our relationship with Powerboat Nationals and other racing entities out there. But I wanted to say full disclosure, we have been working with Powerboat Nationals for many years now, but it's still great to have this guy on. He is hands down, ladies and gentlemen, the hardest working man in all of watercraft racing. I have, I deal with everyone out there. I deal with many, many people out there. I haven't seen anyone put as much hustle in as this guy. Please welcome to the podcast, the managing partner, Graham Poobah, all around man in charge of Powerboat Nationals, Mr. Dan Bunning. Dan, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me, Jared. 
Well, you know, let's get into it, man. We've got about a month and I believe four or five days until the first race of the year in a place that, man, people heard about that. They started scratching their heads. They're like, what? This is this is new. This is different. This isn't a, a reheat of a race site. This is a new race site. Branson, Missouri. And it's one of my favorite places. I mean, this place is crazy. I can, We'll go into it here in the podcast a little bit. But before we get into it too deep, Dan, tell me about how did the Branson event come around? I mean, everybody knows about Table Rock Lake, big lake out there. There's a lot of fish and a lot of stuff going on out there. But this is right at Branson Landing, right by a shopping mall, shopping plaza, and right on the water right there. I mean, but how did this come about? Well, it's pretty interesting. So, so Branson has seen what we have done with, with some of the other cities that, that we've been to over the last few years. And, uh, and they said, why don't you come out for a site visit and see what we got to offer? And my misconception on Branson was I was thinking a bunch of blue haired ladies and <laughs> smorgasbords and a Barbara Mandrell concert. And <laughs> I really had not a whole bunch of interest. I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll give every city a, an opportunity. So, so I went out there and uh, they said, we, we've got two lakes. And I'm like, what do you mean you got two lakes? So they've got Table Rock Lake, which is a big lake. Um, and then they've had Lake Candy Como, which is a very small lake. And uh, you know, they took me to both sites. I looked around at both of them. Um, they took me around town and I'm like, you know what? This is more like a, like a Midwest Las Vegas, like a Bible Belt Las Vegas friendly for kids. And, uh, and kind of like a Pigeon Forge type thing. So these places I've been to before and, uh, you know, I just kind of brushed Branson off. And I'm like, well, we're in the water sports and they've got two lakes. So this might be a, a good combination. So we looked at the big lake and I said, I really like that little lake down there because it's right in front of the shopping plaza. Um, it's got a purpose. It's like a purpose built facility. It's like a stage for our boat racing. And I said, this is where I want to have the boat. So that's, that's how it all started. And we did one event in 2019 and uh, it, 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 went, it went off great. I mean, it's uh Everything was good. Uh, spectators, I mean, just tons of people coming through. Um, and it might not be the same people say all day because they've got spectators just uh, or, or people just coming through all day long uh, just to go shopping. They hear the motors, they come down, they watch the boat racing. Um, so uh, so it, it's it's a pretty neat venue. And yeah, I mean, once it, I, I mean, it's a fantastic venue. I mean, and, and fans, you can go. We're going to be posting the 2019 television coverage that RMG Sports did on the Racer H2O YouTube channel, but you can search for it on YouTube. You can see the crowd. And, and Dan, like you said, one thing that I really enjoy about this is that you do have people come out and they bring their lawn chairs and they set them right there on the the uh, the river or the lake walk, the, the boardwalk, for lack of a better term, and they'll camp out all day. But you also have a lot of fans that are just passing through. Like you said, they're shopping. And when we say shopping plaza fans, I'm not talking like a Dollar General on one end and a, you know, a tattoo parlor on the other end. I mean, this is Branson Landing. On one end, you've got a Bass Pro Shops. And on the other, hand, on the other end, you've got a bunch of restaurants like uh, Jimmy, um, Jimmy Buffett's uh, Land Shark Restaurant, a lot of themed restaurants, high. And this is high-end retail we're talking about here. So you have a lot of tourists that are coming in. You have people there with their lawn chairs. We have a lot of tourists that are coming in. They know about the race. They hear the engines. They're down there shopping. And next thing you know, you don't have just Bransonites there. You might have people from another country there, right, Dan? I mean, Branson's a huge uh, tourism destination. I'll tell you, in the last two years since we, since we were there in 19, of course, we had the pandemic in 20. So since 19, Paula Deen's opened a restaurant and Guy Fieri's opened a restaurant um, right above where we race. Right. And, um, and also along those lines, Tiger Woods just built a golf course there. So, I mean, there's a lot of big names pumping a lot of energy into Branson. Not that it needs it. I mean, the places I've said it a million times, it's like the Vegas of the Midwest. There is so much to do there. It's crazy. I mean, they have well, roller coasters right in town, roller coasters in town. It's insane. Jared, they have mountain coasters, right? I'm sorry. Mountain <laughs> coasters. You're right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's insane what they have there, but you know, so it, it's one of those things that it went well in 19 and so well that now in 2021, coming out of the pandemic, we're not just going back once, 
we're going back multiple times. And I, when I say we, I mean, not just Powerboat Nationals, but Racer H2O is going back four times total. So how did that come about, Dan? How did you get a multi, multi-event deal rolling? So, you know, the, the first year went so well. And, and I kind of went back to, to Branson and said, you know what? We've got the Hydrocross Nationals which is our pro circuit, you know, it's, it's just the pros race and hydrocross nationals. And we, and we've got powerboat nationals and there's 50 shows, roughly 50 shows that take place around Branson. So why don't we just bring a show down to Branson landing? We'll be on the water. We'll do it like once a month. And, uh, you know, so we work out a multi, uh, multi events per year on a multi-year deal. So we're not just going to be back in 2021. We'll be back in 2022, 2023. You know, so the idea is to keep this going and hopefully we can build it maybe from three events um, right there on Tani Como to maybe six events on Tani Como. So that way, once a month, every month, we've got a boat race there and, and a jet ski race there. And, uh, you know, I kind of sold them on the idea of uh, we can make this, an annual event we come back everybody's expecting it it's just another show going on and you know to make it better let's bring in rmg tv and uh, get jerry romsberg involved and uh that's what kind of really hit it out of the park well and the other thing let's look at it i mean branson's using this as a major it's a show certainly to help bring fans to um branson landing to see the to see the race down there but they're also using this as a big, using Racer H2O as a big marketing tool, right? I mean, they're, they're using our show just like we've used in the past, like with Knoxville, and we'll be using again with Guntersville, where they use the show to help promote tourism. So this, this, this racing that's going on in a television component takes on a whole new flavor then as we start to look at how we're helping Branson uh, market themselves. But also along those lines as well, Having multiple races in Branson, we touched on a little bit earlier. One, one of the things I love is you have a large audience there. It's a two, these are two-day events, large audience, three deep, all day long, and it's a diverse audience. It's not like you're just going to have the same fans coming out all the time. We hope they do, but let's face it, you're going to have tourists from all over filtering through Branson, and then they'll get, they're going to be coming down. So if you're a driver and you have a sponsor, you have the national television coverage, and then you also are racing in front of people from all over that they're going to take, if you're there handing out literature, if you're there signing autographs, whatever the case may be, they're taking that experience back home with them. So your sponsors are going to love this sort of stuff because it's something you're not going to see anywhere else. I mean, it happens four times. And, and the other thing I wanted to talk about, Dan, was let's talk about the cost savings to riders and drivers. I mean, let's face it. Coming out of pandemic, coming out of the pandemic, money's tight for a lot of people. They may not be able to travel. They may want to be part of a touring series and the pro circuit, but they maybe just don't have the money or they can't get all the time off that it takes to go all over the place. Branson is an opportunity that you can race in a series in one location and do it very, very affordably, right? Well, and, and that's the thing, Jerry. We're, we're looking at different options here. Uh, Branson would like for us to move our Powerboat Nationals headquarters there. Um, and and we're, we're looking at warehousing now. So if we could offer that out to the racers and say, Powerboat Nationals headquarters is here. We have a warehouse. You can keep your stuff at our facility. You don't have to drag it back to hometown. You just come here. You fly in. You bring your helmet. You bring your gear. Um, and it makes it easy. Um, like you said, on the, on the, the fans, there's always rotating fans. It's, it's, it's kind of like, there's always somebody new that happens to be the audience. And, uh, and, and the good thing that I like about Branson, it's centrally located, you know, we're the same, the same distance, say from California to Branson, as Florida to Branson from New York to Branson. So this way we're able to get competitors from all over the country. And that's why, you know, the event that we're going to do in September we're just going to call it the, uh, the American cup and it's going to be open to all classes. Um, that's, we'll get into that later, but you know, Tani Como that 
there are brands landing. Um, if you want to come race May, June, July this year, you could do that. Hopefully we'll have it set up. You're able to keep your equipment there. And then, uh, then we're looking at also moving our driving school there uh, for, for the boats and working with uh, uh, the Underhills and their junior stars um, with their driving school for, for, the, for the jet skis and for the kids. So what we plan on doing is kind of making Branson the hub of all of our races. And then still go out and, and race in places like Knoxville and in Guntersville and any other places, but Branson would be your home and you'd have a number of races there. And the nice thing about this too is while you're racing on the same water, I mean, let's face it, the course is never the same. I mean, everything's moving during the race. And while you're, you're racing on the same water in the same town, you're never racing in front of the same people. There's always new people coming through there. And then you add to that the national TV audience that Racer H2O adds. It's just if you are a, a rider or a driver and you're looking to race at the top level and not have the insane travel costs that go along with being part of a major pro touring series, this is perfect for you. And, you know, it, it's, it's just one of those things that you, you, you look at what drivers and riders hate about racing it's normally a lot of the travel costs just getting to the race and getting from the race here rather than having to load up your your trailer and take you know a whole week off just to race for two days you could fly in on a friday night and fly out on a sunday night and leave your gear there maybe come in a little bit earlier and have some fun in town and work on your stuff race the next race whatever the case may be so it allows a lot more flexibility and i think it saves a lot of people money and i think it's a it's a good idea but uh uh, I'm talking with Dan Bunning, who is the managing director of Powerboat Nationals. Dan, let's talk about what fans can see when they come to Branson in May. Again, Branson Grand Prix Series, round number one, May 15th and 16th. If you're in Branson, come on down to Branson Landing in Lake Caney Como. If you're planning on being in town, we'd love to see you. Sign some autographs, take some pictures. You're, this is a very unique experience you will have. And, uh, and Branson coming down to Branson Landing to watch a race. But let's talk about, for the fans, and for some of the riders and drivers out there that may not be, be clear on what's happening at race one, what classes will be racing at Branson in May? Okay, so, so when we originally came to, to, to Branson, we brought our Pro Tunnel 2 class and our Pro Sport class of jet skis. So knowing that Branson's like a city of shows, we got to figure out how to, how to make it more appealing. So we've got tight water. So we're going to bring the, uh, you know, the Pro Tunnel 2 boats back out, which, uh, which are all our, our smaller class of boats. And then we have added the, the Pro Ski. So now we'll have a, a stand-up ski and a sit-down ski. So Pro Ski is stand-up. Uh, pro Sport will be sit-down. And uh, one of the other neat things that, that we're going to add is a lot of these teams and these drive, these pro drivers have children from 10 to 14 years old. We have a junior ski class and uh, we're going to put them on probably early in the morning. Um, so that way they can get a feel of what the pro circuit's all about. And to make it pro level, these junior ski riders are going to get paid also. So uh, that's kind of unheard of uh, in today's jet ski racing, but we want to make the kids understand, hey, they see dads get these checks um, and uh, w why not give them checks? You know, so uh, so we want to we want to turn those guys in the pro uh, or those kids, those kids in the pro racer someday. Um, so you can plan out one class of boats, uh, the two class of jet skis. And of course, uh, like I said, in the morning time, we'll have the, uh, the junior skis. And all of these, to include the junior skis, will receive coverage in Racer H2O's national television program. 130 million households, at least eight networks. I say at least because we're always talking to new networks. We're always trying to build. But as it stands right now, 130 million households will be seeing Pro Tunnel 2, Pro Sport, Pro Ski, and the futures or junior class, whatever the name come uh, name comes about, it's very much like Supercross, where you see the little kids out there at some point. The Supercross gets the fact that they need to replenish their ranks, and it's great that uh, you're thinking, you know, using some forward thinking there, Dan, to uh, help uh, 
bring some more younger blood into uh, jet ski racing. That's great. So you mentioned about handing out checks. I know that we have a lot of riders and drivers that listen to this podcast. Maybe they're on the fence. Maybe they think that they should be staying home, painting the house, cutting the grass, doing the laundry uh, on May 15th and 16th. Let's talk about money and the money matrix. What kind of, uh, what kind of prize money? What kind of tone money are we looking at? So, so what we did here was, you know, we only get, we got an X amount of dollars for each class. So what we did was we kind of got with our key racers that, that, that support us. And we said, Hey, how do you guys want to be paid? So back in our boats, um, the boat guy said, well, we like to have tow money. That's all of them come from Michigan. Michigan seems to be a big pocket of uh, racers, but we've got people coming from uh, Georgia uh, California, you know, so, so they said, Hey, I'm going to be on the road. I want to get tow money. So we're, we're going to offer up a dollar a mile tow money and then have a little bit of podium money there for first, second, third. Um, we go back to the jet ski guys. We said, how do you guys want to be paid? You want tow money? And they said, no, it's all about racing. We think whoever gets on the podium, the podium guys should get beat, get paid. So what we've offered up for, uh, for pro sport and pro ski a first place finish is going to get you 2,500 bucks. Um, wow. And then we'll, we'll, we'll have money for second, third place as well. So the winner will walk away with the check for $2,500. That's pretty daggone good. And that's in each class. So, uh, so the boat guys will make it on their tow. You know, they're, they're pulling their boat across country. Um, you know, and, and this is something that we kind of leave up to the drivers. You tell us what you want um, and we'll build it for you. Well, that's impressive. That's not seen very often, but uh, I, my, I tip my cap to you for listening to everybody and taking everyone's input uh, to try to make this not just as good of a show for the fans on the shore, the fans watching on television, but also a good experience for the riders and drivers that come in and want to have some fun with their toys and, and get out there and rip around in front of all these fans and show off their sponsors. Now, uh, you know, since day one of working together, Dan, we've been working on TV. Let's talk about TV and Racer H2O in 2021 and beyond. Talk about the importance. I mean, because again, Racer H2O is available to every race promoter out there. And we always have been open to working with every race promoter out there. But the only race promoter to ever contact us to do anything was Dan Bunning. So we've been working very well with him and his events. We've seen great success growing every year. But Racer H2O is open to anybody. So if you're a race promoter of watercraft racing, racerh2o.com, get a hold of us. We'd love to talk to you. I'm going to warn you the 2021 schedule is pretty packed right now, but it's never too early to start talking about next year. But Dan, you've always seen the importance of television and growing not just powerboat nationals and hydrocross nationals, but the sport in general. So talk about that a little bit. You know, why, why do you think this is so important? Why do your, why do your host cities think this is so important? You know, I, I, think from, from the beginning, you know, I, I see the importance of the TV and every year Parabo Nationals gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's, and that, that's just all the way around. You know, we, we had 14 events one year. Um, I think eight of those were televised. Mm -hmm. I've get other cities contact me and say, Hey, we, we seen, uh, whatever your Knoxville event on TV and we want to do an event. Um, so it helps us market and sell what we're doing and hopefully uh you know the drivers are taking advantage of this and they're using that for their sponsors <clears throat> excuse me and showing them hey this is me on tv this is what we've got um you know we we've looked at just doing one network um but i think what works best for us is getting on as many networks as possible um i believe you're up to eight networks this year um in the past i think we we may have had more or less, but, but being on multiple networks instead of just one benefits us. You know, it gets our brand out. We've got Hydrocross Nationals. We've got Powerboat Nationals. We're coming out with Off-Road Nationals. So we're becoming an events company. And I think TV has really helped grow that. Um, you know, and then we gear our television towards the host city. Um, you know, I've, like we go to Branson and we're, you know, tell us what Branson has to offer. Um, and we'll put that on TV and we'll let everybody know, hey, these are all the cool things you're going to do in Branson. Um, speaking of which, 
in the off season, I took my family to Branson and I said, I'm going to try to do as much stuff here as possible. <laughs> um, and that was in about a five day period. You cannot do everything in Branson five days. I guarantee it. Oh, I, um, I think you'd need a month. You'd need a month plus. Dude, it's I, a lot like Disney world where you just can't do it. I mean, it's, there's so much going on there, but what, what were some of the things that you and your family did tell, you know, in case some of the riders want to bring their kids or their wives along or their significant others along, uh, there's a lot to do. What did you guys do? So my kids seem to love the mountain coasters. So we did, I think every mountain coaster there. Um, we went to indoor go-kart, outdoor go-kart. Um, we went to a, a Felix is a, a adventure park, um, which is just, tons of stuff to do um they've got outdoor skydiving uh, we did the zip line we did the uh, hot air balloon we did the train ride um there's just went to a few different shows there's just so many things to do and one of the things that that we're working with branson to do is if you sign up and you want to come out and, and race in branson we're going to get you their booklet um and it it goes through and you, you would can sit down with the family, go through it, figure out things you want to do in the off time. Uh, we know that Branson two and Gundersville is, uh, is back to back weekends. So that would be a good time to take vacation. Mm -hmm. So that way you could spend an extra two, three, four days in Branson and then drive to Guntersville um, right. and do all the different activities that, that Branson has to offer. And if I was right smack in the middle or at the beginning, I guess, of uh, summer vacation for a lot of kids, Branson 2 being uh, June 19th and 20th, followed by Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest on the 26th and 27th. So, yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, take some time off and then do, get go back to back racing at two fantastic events. You know, I, I want to get into Guntersville just really quickly and, and very lightly because I know we're getting short on time. But I want to remind everyone, all you drivers and riders, registration is now open for Branson. Branson won round number one of the Branson Grand Prix Series, May 15th and 16th. Dan, tell us a little bit about the bonus money for early registration. I know there's some extra tow money there, right, or something. So, so we've got a gear that if you're one of the first ones to register, um, you're going to get that full dollar uh, a mile. So it's kind of important to be uh, up in the front of the pack uh, when you register. Uh, we still have plenty of spaces open. Uh, but as you start falling off and you get down into the lower levels of registering, like say, hey, I'm going to wait till the last minute, um, that might put you at 50 cents a mile. So you want to make sure that you get in soon, especially for boats and register. Um, the, uh, the, the jet ski racing, um, it's all geared towards, you know, the best of the best. So, uh, but we got to have 10 boats on the line to make sure that we get that full payout. So that way first place to get 2,500 bucks. So it's important to everybody get registered. Um, we've got the RP, uh, RV park information. I just put up on the site. Uh, we have an RV park that's located right next to the cold pits. Um, so that way you can put your RV there. I believe it starts, starts at $39 a night, goes up depending on where they put you. Uh, and one thing I want to add on, on Branson and Tani Como, if you come to race there uh, for hydrocross, it is a small, tight, technical course. Um, so, um, you know, th th that's why these guys are pro. I mean, you've got to be on top of your game to be able to make it through these courses. Um, so uh, that's one thing I want to put in there. Yeah, I mean, you got to be on the top of your game because let's face it, like anywhere else, Lake Tani Como, the waters are unforgiving. We saw last year, Christian Daly looked like he had, he had the whole thing in the bag, man. I mean, he was killing it in, in the heats, and then he came out in the in the feature, won the whole shot, took off with the lead. Yeah, well, Lake Tani Como had other plans for him, man. Reached up, pulled him off his ski, and away he went. And then the the youngster Hayden Skellett took the took the win late in the race. So, I mean it's a it's a challenging course it's a great great course put together by course marshal randy scott you know he always puts good stuff together good challenging courses and it's also great for television we will have television coverage on all this again with helmet cams with cow cams all the you know anyone that's raced with powerboat and hydrocross nationals knows that uh rmg sports and racer h2o we i think we've single-handedly kept gopro in business over the years so we come in with a lot of equipment but registration is open now for Branson, get to powerboatnationals.com. All the links are right there. Dan's constantly posting new information there, powerboatnationals.com. 
Let's talk quickly about Guntersville, Dan. I don't want to take any steam away from Branson because that's race number one. I'm excited to get there, but we'll also be in Guntersville for Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest. And this could be, in fact, I think it's going to be, hey, I mean, again, we're just lucky to be doing any kind of race and coming out of a pandemic. This is going to be the only PT1 race of 2021. And man, people are excited. Tell me about the, the uh, signups for that. Well, as of today, we've got 18 entries uh, for PT1. Wow. And we still have two more months open on, on, uh, on open registration. Wow. So, I mean, hey, if you got a big boat, you want to come out and race PT1 with Powerboat Nationals, and you're looking for a challenge, we got some big names coming to Guntersville Lake. I saw Chris Fairchild, APBA president, OPC veteran. We see Johnny Fleming out there. We see a lot of guys coming up from Texas. A lot of big names are going to be in Guntersville fans. So this is along with the H1 Unlimited Hydroplanes, along with Hydro Cross. I mean, if you haven't bought your tickets for Guntersville, you need to get online and get you some tickets for the Guntersville Lake Fest or Lake uh, Hydro Fest because it is going to be off the chart. But we are focused right now on Branson. Powerboat Nationals Hydrocross Nationals first event of 2021, our first television event of 2021, May 15th and 16th. Fans be in Branson, Missouri. Learn more about Powerboat Nationals, whether you're a rider, driver, or a fan, powerboatnationals.com. And if you're making plans, and you should be making plans to go to Branson for round one of the Branson Grand Prix series. On May 15th and 16th, make sure you visit explorebranson.com. That's explorebranson.com. Carve out some time because you're going to be at that website for a while. They have a ton of stuff to do. We can't wait to get there with our cameras rolling. And Dan Bunning, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to uh, be on the podcast, talk about what you've got going on. We thank you for all the hard work you put into this. And uh, hey, best of luck in Branson. We can't wait to see you there. Hey, Jared, one last thing I might want to add. If you're a hydrocross guy, you might want to throw your wetsuit in the trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we won't go into the science behind the reason behind it. You'll learn when you get there, fans, and ask any of the hydrocross riders that have raced on Lake Tanicomo. I believe it is always at 45 degrees. It is a cold, cold lake, and that's even in June, July, August. It stays at 45 degrees. It is a cold lake. You show up to race, bring your wetsuit, Hydrocross Racers, no doubt about it. Well, Dan, thank you very much for your time. Good luck. We'll see you in Branson. Thank you, Jared. Fans, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Dan Bunning. Next week on the podcast, I'm going to do my best to get one out. Production schedule starting to pick up a little bit. Actually got hired on by the World of Outlaws. Sprint car fans, if you're watching World of Outlaws Racing from Bristol, Tennessee, next weekend and you notice that the turn three camera is a little out of focus well you can blame it on me that's going to be me they tell me so got hired on by my friends at world of outlaws i'm going to be behind a camera next week i'll be on the road i may not be able to get a podcast out i'm going to try because i've got this guy lined up maybe you've heard of him steve Merlu. yeah maybe you heard of him he's the defending powerboat nationals pt2 world champion and Wait, can anybody beat this guy? We're going to have him on, have him talk about Branson and, man, how much he's looking forward to getting back on the waters of Lake Tanicomo, get back in the cockpit. And I'm going to ask him straight up, can anybody beat him? Can anyone beat Steve Merlu? I don't know. So far, the answer has been a very precious few, but nobody's beat him on Lake Tanicomo in Branson. So we're going to try to get that podcast together. If not, we'll have him on the very fall, very next week. But either way, fans, a reminder, subscribe to this channel no matter how you're listening to it. We really appreciate your input. We really appreciate you subscribing. And most importantly, we really appreciate you spending some time listening. So thanks for listening this week, fans. We hope to be back on next week. If we aren't, we'll be on the week after that. Either way, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. I'm your old pal, Jared. And you have been listening to the Racer H2O Podcast.